So welcome back to continue with the uh, dual browser. Uh, so what this uh, app demo is all about um, is it's all about learning how to use the UI split view controller. Uh, we focused on that in the last video lecture, uh, so hopefully you watched that and you got cut up. Uh, we're going to be continuing that same app um, to start learning about uh, working with UI table views. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, jump forward in the slides a little bit. Uh, so we're going to be working with UI table views. Um, <clears throat> this example that we're going to do together here should really be a second example or a third example in working with table views. Um, I'm going to assume that you work through the chapters um, in the book. The book does a great job with table views. Like if there was a single topic that it just nailed, um, it's table views, right? So they work all through chapter 8, introducing table views, getting you used to using them. Um, and then chapter 9, it says it's about navigation controllers, um, but really it's about table views, right? So like it, it kind of, it brings it together with a navigation control, but really they're showing you a bunch of stuff about table views. Um, and we're going to do an example using table views as well. Um, but hopefully, I mean, if you look at the page count of these things, it starts on page 193 um, and it finishes on page um, 321s, right? So there were... Hopefully you've already had 130 pages of table views uh, by the time we do this demo. So hopefully they're getting getting pretty used to table views by now. What we're going to view with our table views is we're going to uh, set up our bookmarks uh, table view controller. Uh, right now in our app, our bookmark table view controller just shows rows one through or zero through nine. So it's got ten of them. Um, it's just static. It's just sitting here. Um, it's really not doing anything useful yet. What we want to eventually do here is we want it to where if you click on one of these, these are going to be bookmarks, um, and it's going to launch um, into the appropriate web view that, uh, that bookmark. In order to decide whether it launches into the top or the bottom, we're going to put a little segment control right here to say whether it should go into the top one or the bottom one. Um, and then once we get the basic functionality working, uh, we're going to have like some hard-coded ones. Uh, then we're going to start showing you some more stuff with table views. Uh, we're going to be able to delete them, um, so delete our bookmarks, uh, reorder the bookmarks so we can change the order around, um, add new bookmarks, that's obviously pretty important for bookmarks is being able to add new ones, um, and then also edit an existing bookmark. So if you decide you want to rename something, uh, you could do that easily. Um, so we're going to show you all these skills uh, with table views. Uh, the one that's going to take by far the longest is adding a new bookmark. Because in order to add a new bookmark, this is the book skipped over this one. They kind of glossed over this, and they said, "Ah, oh, adding's about the same as deleting. Don't worry about it. You can figure it out." Um, I will say that adding is actually much harder because you have to make the new bookmark, right? So you have to create a whole new view controller uh, to create this new bookmark. Um, and so we're going to spend a lot of time on uh, on adding. I'm uh, going to reuse some skills that we did before. Um, so um, <clears throat> UI table views. Um, First off, they're not like hard, um, but they are big. So there's just a lot going on with table views. Um, so if you were to go look up uh, UI table view, um, first you can see if you go to task, there are a lot of different functions um, on table views. Um, we're going to cover some of them. We're not even going to. We're not even going to come close to all of them, right? Um, there are a lot of things that you can do with table views. But the two biggest are by far these two little guys at the end, um, managing um, the delegate and the data source. So there's going to be two separate um, delegates with protocols, uh, one called delegate, the other called data source. Um, and if you click on these guys, so I'm going to click on the delegate one first here, um, you can see that there are a whole bunch of delegate methods. Um, and this is just one of the two. There's like, I don't know, what is like 15 or so here. Um, and these are, the table will call these at different time um, to help with the display of information. So it'll call this for help um, on how do I display my stuff. Um, and then in addition to um, the delegate, there's also the data source. Um, and it has a data source protocol. And if you were to go look at this, um, you can see that this one has um, quite a few as well. Um, so it's not quite as many, but quite a few for the data source. Um, it'll ask questions about getting things for the data. Um, and we're going to play with uh, quite a few of these. 
Uh, so right now, if you were to go look in at the code um, and see what we're doing, just to kind of get a feel for our starting point, bookmarks table view controller .h. We said, hey, we are a table view controller. Uh, as a reminder, this did a couple things for us. This set up this object to be the delegate and the data source. Um, so that connection already got made. Um, it went ahead and made the, the actual table view for us so we don't have a zip file because it just made the table view for us. And then what the template did is it stubbed out some things for us. Um, it's got a little initialization area if we want to do things when it first gets created. Um, we're actually not going to use that today. Um, this file is going to get big enough. I'll, I'll delete some things that we don't need. Uh, view did load. We will use this. Uh, we're going to do some work with view did load. Um, these others, view will appear, did appear, will disappear, did disappear. Um, we don't really need these today. They're, I'm glad they stubbed them in, on, in here, but we don't really need them today. Uh, should auto-rotate, we'll just leave alone. Uh, the next things that it stubbed in here is it stubbed in some things for the, um, the table view data source. I actually don't like that they spelled it out. I would have rather they uh, just left it in here uh, like this. Um, I doesn't have the word delegate at the end. Um, because that way you can hold down uh, command and double click on it. Um, oops, looks like I typed something. Um, UI table view data source protocol. I thought I could click on it. Ah, I forgot the word view. Um, so I like to actually say this. That way I can hold down command and I can double click on it. And it'll go show me um, what all the different things are. Uh, you can see that there are a couple that are required. Um, you have to tell it the number of rows, um, and then you also have to give it a cell for row at index path. So those two are required. Um, and then there are a whole bunch more that are optional. Um, and some of these we're going to use, um, some of them we're not going to use. Let's just glance through them real quick. Number of sections, uh, we will implement this, but we're going to just set it to the default of one. Um, headers and footers, we're not even going to mess with that in this, this example. Um, can edit, um, yep, we're going to deal with can edit. Can move, yep, we're going to mess with can edit and can move. Um, there's a whole little thing about section indices. These are the next two. We're not going to deal with that. Um, and then uh, commit editing style, we will deal with that. And move, we will deal with that. So there's kind of, um, there's kind of two here. There's can edit, can move, and then there's a commit the editing and commit the move. Um, and we're going to play with both of those. Uh, you will find that they they stubbed those in for us, which is great. They stubbed in the number of sections, uh, which we're just using the default of one. Uh, number of rows, we set that to 10. Cell for row at index path. This is kind of the main one where you make things. We're going to modify this later some. Uh, can edit. Uh, we're going to do we're we're going to do that. Um, commit editing. Yep. Um, can move. Um, I would rearrange these. I would have put the can move um, above this one. Um, and then move. So we're going to deal with all these. So I'm going to keep their code. That's, that's just half. That's the data source. Um, after the data source is the actual UI table view uh, delegate. You can see they only stubbed in one for us here. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, I changed it to what the proper name is, so I can command double click on it. Let's go look at some of the ones here. Uh, they're all optional. Um, and there are a bunch of them here too. There's will display cell, stuff about the height. So you can see this is like how it looks, things like that. Um, view for header, view for footer. We don't really care about those. Um, the uh, accessories indicator. Um, we will eventually need this. Um, so this is, um, this one's actually, this top one is deprecated, but this one we will eventually need. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do a control C on it real quick. Um, and go ahead and paste it in just because I know I'm going to need it later. Um, so we'll, we won't need that for a while, but we will eventually need it. Let's go back in here. Um, so that's if somebody presses on the accessory button. Um, will select row. Um, this is this one's extremely important. This is when somebody clicks on a row, um, and they stub this in for us. It's so important. That's good. Um, other things. Um, there's some things about editing. Um, 
There's this one, which we're going to bring over, editing style. Um, you can set the editing style to either um, delete or insert. Um, and we do want this one, so we're going to go ahead and bring this over. This one, the default would have worked for us, uh, but we're going to go ahead and we'll be explicit about it. Um, and so this needs to return something. Um, so um, I'll just kind of stub, I'll comment the whole thing out for now, but we will eventually need to deal with that. And let's go look at the rest of them and then we'll start actually working. So the, the reason I did this is just because I wanted to show you and there's things like indentation level, um, target index path, um, there's, there's quite a few things uh, that you can do in here. Um, and what I wanted to show you is I just wanted to give you a taste that there's a lot, uh, but it's not insurmountable. It's really not insurmountable. Um, and we're going to try to tackle them a few at a time uh, to try to make sense out of all of this. Cool, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start playing with our bookmarks table view controller. Um, and we're going to start doing a little bit more with it. Oh, by the way, I, I meant to mention the reason that um, there's so much is because table views are used for so much. Like bookmarks um, in Safari, they use table views. Um, contacts obviously uses a table view. Um, the YouTube browser uses table views. The App Store uses table views. Um, photos use table views. Um, and table views can even look like weird things. This one here, how there's kind of like four in a row. This is actually a table view as well, uh, just with custom table view cells. So table views are everywhere. Uh, that's why they're, but they're just, they're so robust they can be used for so much. So let's start playing around with this guy. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, if we were to run our code from last time, um, you can see that our table is very simple. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this navigation bar. We're going to make some modifications to it. Uh, first off, we're going to want a segment control in the middle, um, an edit button on the left, and an add button on the right. Um, so we're going to start um, making that happen. So let's go ahead and um, let's go into view did load. So in view did load, what we want to do is we want to put... Um, put an add button on the right and then put um, an edit button uh, on the left. Uh, and the code to make that happen looks like this. So I just pasted it from the slides. I'm going to uh, cheat quite a bit today. Um, you can see that what I did here is actually very similar to some stuff they'd stubbed in for you as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete what they stubbed in for me. Uh, so let's look at these two things. Uh, so we'll start with the add button. So with the add button what I did um, was I said um, self.navigationItem if you're inside a navigation controller you have a navigation item. Um, right uh, bar button item um, so I'm going to make a bar button item for the right. Um, and what I do here is I'm going to initialize it um, with a system item. There are actually a lot of built-in buttons for you. Um, and the way you use these is you can um, <clears throat> use this in it with bar button system item. Um, and one of the things you pass in here is you have pass in which uh, system item you want. Um, you can see that there are a whole host of system buttons that are kind of done for you. The nice thing about these buttons is that they're localized already. Uh, they're available in like 19 languages, um, and that all happen automatically. Um, they have um, a visual component, uh, which is nice, um, and some of them even perform some action for your behalf. Um, so it's good to know what's available for you. So if you want a done button, um, you can just add that, cancel, um, Edit, that's what we're using this time. Or no, no, we're not using edit, we're using add. Um, add, that's what we're using this time. You can see it gives you the little icon. Um, compose, send, um, all sorts of neat stuff. Um, refresh, um, stop loading. Um, so these we could have used in our dual browser, right? We could have used a couple of these guys. They might have been handy. Uh, there's a little camera button. Um, trash, undo, 
um, all sorts of cool little buttons. Um, and the one that we're going to use is we're going to use the, uh, the add button. Great, so we say um, bar button item system add. If somebody clicks on it, uh, we say what function they want to call. Uh, we're going to have them call a function called um, add bookmark. Uh, suppose we ought to add that just so our system doesn't crash. Bookmark. Uh, we'll print out a little log message if somebody clicks it. Percent %s. Uh, we'll just do the classic uh, print out what the function is. Um, and then on the, the left hand side, this one's really magical. Um, that's one of the hard things about table views and navigation controllers is it's hard to understand what all's been done for you, um, but there is something called an edit button item. Um, it, there's no other code we're going to write here. This is it. Um, and what it really is, um, is it is um, something that's defined on um, a UI view controller if it's part of a navigation controller. Um, and it's only useful if it's a table view in a navigation controller. Um, but enough people do this that they went ahead and made a button for you. Um, and so you can use this button. Um, and in the book, you did this manually, right? They didn't use the button. But we'll use this magic little button um, that converts it between editing and not editing mode. Cool. So just uh, there's two of the buttons. Uh, the third button that we want to add is one out of segment control to the middle. Um, this is going to be easiest to add in the uh, window.zip file. Uh, we also want to change the color while we're there as well. So let's go and open up the window.zip file um, and let's add this last button that we want. Um, so this last button that we want is a UI segment control. Um, UI segment controls can be inserted into bar button items um, and then that can be used to be the, uh, the center view here. And what I'm going to do with this little segment control um, is I'm going to write the words top and bottom on it. Another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to make this bar button item be green uh, to kind of match my other uh, tab bar, or, uh, toolbars. Easiest way to grab it is just to click on it in the drop down list here. It's kind of hard to grab up here. Um, and then if I hit command one, um, I can change it to black opaque if I'd like. Um, why didn't it show up? Um, and I can change the color to green if I so desire. Ah, there we go. It was just a little slow to refresh on me there. Um, great, so now it'll match uh, my other uh, items um, and it'll match with the nice green color. So let's run it um, and let's see if uh, my buttons are popping up. So right now I should have the buttons that pop up for edit, uh, top, bottom, um, and then plus. Uh, you can hit top bottom but nothing really happens. Uh, you can hit the plus button um, and it should call that little uh, you know NS log function but it doesn't really do much. If you hit the edit button it will actually do something. Um, it will switch it into the editing mode um, and then it also change the button to say the word done uh, which is kinda neat. Um, if you click on one of these little like do not enter signs, it'll show the delete button. Um, however, if you click on delete, nothing will really happen. Um, so it's not it's not really implemented that far yet. Um, so this does call a function, but we haven't implemented that function. So you can't really actually delete things yet. Um, another, this is more just to warn you about it. Um, if you rotate it um, and you click on bookmarks, um, you'll notice that it goes ahead and it added all those same buttons, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, you can click on uh, Add, and it'll call the function, top, bottom. You'll notice that it does change the color of the toolbar. It changes the tint um, for the popover. Um, and the reason I warn you about this is because now if you rotate back, it actually keeps that same tint. Um, so I'll leave this as something you could fix if you wanted. I'm not that worried about it. Um, but it does change the tent for the popover, and it maintains that tent. Um, so you'd have to put it back to green if you wanted. Cool, so we've got these buttons um, on the top, um, and life is going good. Uh, let's keep doing some more stuff uh, to make our bookmarks actually usable. Uh, so those display, uh, voila. 
Uh, the next thing we want to do um, is we want to start adding um, some IB actions um, and some outlets uh, so that we can uh, make some connections on here, mainly the outlets. Um, and so our bookmark, viewcontroller.h, you can see it currently doesn't have anything. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add um, an array uh, to display uh, the bookmark titles. So we're going to have an array that keeps the bookmark titles. Um, and then we're also going to have a dictionary um, to store um, all the NS URL requests for the bookmark titles. So there's going to be something that's visible. Um, and then when you click on it, it has to know like what URL to actually get. And we're going to store that in a dictionary. We also want to be able to access that segmented control, um, so we want to link to the segment control uh, that does the whole top bottom. And when somebody clicks on a bookmark, um, we want to be able to update the web view, um, so we're also going to need a link uh, to the dual UI uh, web view browser. Uh, web view controller is what it's called. Uh, so we're going to need all four of these um, <coughs> IB outlets. Um, so let's go ahead and cheat, um, and let's go ahead and steal some code for this. Um, so if I was to cheat, um, I'll go ahead and I keep my comments around. Uh, so I needed the display names. Um, and then I also needed a dictionary to store all these requests in. Oops. Um, and then I also needed a link to the, uh, the dual browser. And then also a link to that segment control. Um, and then my properties. Um, and then I'll... Um, for all of these different IVARs, uh, you can see that I just did a standard uh, non-atomic retain for them, so nothing, uh, nothing too special there. Um, you'll also see that uh, some of them are IB outlets and some are not. Um, so these bottom two are IB outlets. Um, so let's go ahead and do our synthesize and then we'll do our connections. Um, I think I went ahead and brought over the uh, synthesize code as well. So there we synthesized all of them. In addition to synthesizing them, we should take care of the uh, memory management. Uh, so take care of our dialic while we remember. Um, and then if you want to be a really good memory management citizen, um, you should be in the habit of releasing them if the view gets trashed. Um, again, in this example, the view won't really get trashed uh, because it's always present. If the view gets trashed, then um, well, probably something surprising happened. But if the view does get trashed, uh, we can let go of these things. No big deal. Cool. So let's go connect our two um, outlets. Um, so to do this, um, the only place we can connect to these things is in the main Windows zip file. So in the main Windows zip file, um, this is where our bookmarks table view controller got made um, and he wants to connect to two things. He wants to connect to the dual uh, uh, web view controller. Oops, must not have saved uh, not have saved something, right? Cool, so there I saved it. Looked like it was already saved. Um, not seeing my IB outlets pop up. What am I doing wrong? Um, let me just pause for a second. I'll see what I'm pasting. Uh, like I temporarily deleted things whenever I uh, must have saved it. I mean, it, it lost a track of <coughs> that I had um, a bookmarks table view controller. So all I did to fix is I just went here um, and I said the class was a bookmarks table view controller, um, and then it got happy again. All right. Don't know why that happened, but uh, must have been with how I copy-pasted things. Um, so at any rate, I want to just select 
this um, and connect it to my segment controller. Um, so now that's connected. Um, and then I wanted to um, connect also to my dual browser. Um, and now that one's fixed up. Um, and hopefully I didn't cause any other weird errors uh, with what I had done there. Um, so now those should be connected. Uh, let's just make sure it's running happy-go-lucky. Seems to be running fine. Cool. All right, so um, got my outlets connected. Um, so that was great. Uh, the next thing I want to do is um, I want to put in something to start with um, into my mutable array and my mutable dictionary. So inside view did load, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make um, a dictionary uh, to hold um, uh, initial bookmarks. And then I'm also going to make an array um, of bookmark titles. And what I'm going to do is um, the bookmark titles are going to be the keys in the dictionary. Um, so the bookmark titles will kind of get used double. Um, and just like before, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and copy some code over because that would take a long time to type all that. Um, so what I'm doing here um, is in my dictionary. Um, it's uh, the value is going to be an NS URL request. Um, so a request has an NS URL. The NS URL is made from a string. Um, so I'm going to load in a bunch of requests into my dictionary. The key for each request is going to be the, the bookmark title. So the title is just going to be like Apple, Apple Insider, Google, uh, Rolls-Hulman, or Learn iOS Development. Oh, I need to get rid of, it looks like there was an extra space here. Um, that's fine for slides, but that would not work out very well in code. So get rid of my extra space. Uh, and then you can see I finish with the word nil. So it goes value key, value key, value key, value key, value key, then nil when we're done. So that creates a new mutable dictionary. It's mutable because we're going to be adding things to it, removing things from it. Uh, then we assign it to the property and we deal with our memory management. Uh, and then once we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and make an array of the bookmark titles. Uh, what I chose to do is instead of typing them again, I just grabbed the all keys. Um, I sorted them alphabetically is how I chose to do it. Um, and then I assigned that to the display names um, and I took care of my memory management. So we've added kind of that background data structure. Uh, but in order to make it actually visible in the table, uh, we have to tell the table about it. So instead of just always saying there are 10 rows, um, the number of rows is equal to the bookmark display names uh, count. Um, so you can just you can access it via an IVAR, um, or if you feel better about it, you can use kind of the objective C look. Um, so the bookmark display names count. Uh, so that's how many we're going to display. And instead of displaying a random uh, like row message, uh, let's make the text labels text be um, the bookmark display name object at index. Um, so whatever row we're in. Um, so display the display name. So with these two little changes, how many rows there are and what's in each row, um, and then actually having a backing store. Um, it will display right. Clicking on them won't do anything yet, but it'll at least display right. Um, and so you can see that our opening bookmarks are Apple, Apple Insider, Google, Learn iOS Development, and Rolls-Hulman. Uh, you can click them, but they don't do anything. Um, in fact, they stay selected, which I don't really want it to stay selected either. Um, so we've added a little bit. No, no delete yet. Uh, we've added real, um, <coughs> real table rows. Uh, so that was good. You can see in the slides here I did the same two things. Um, and now we've got real table rows. So that's great. The next thing that I would like to do is I, I would really like to make clicking on them do something. Right? That would be, that would be a win. Um, whenever you um, click on a row, um, it calls did select row at index path. 
you can see that what it's expecting you to do here is it's expecting you to push something onto the navigation controller. Um, that's not what we're doing here at all, so you can delete their comments. What we're doing here is uh, we are going to um, load uh, the NS uh, URL request um, into the appropriate web view. Um, so we're going to have to look at the segment control. So look at segment control uh, to decide where to load. Um, and then we're going to have to um, grab the NS URL request uh, from the dictionary. So we're going to have to get which row is selected, um, and that'll be the bookmark title. Um, and then we're going to use that title to grab an NS URL request from the dictionary. Um, and then we're going to load it into the appropriate web view. Um, so this is what we want to do uh, when somebody clicks on a row. Now that we've got the strategy, uh, let's go copy-paste how you actually do that. Um, so what I'm doing here is I am grabbing um, the key uh, from the display names. So whatever row they clicked on, I'm going to grab that name. Um, then I'm going to grab the um, URL request from the dictionary. So kind of these, both these are steps in doing that. Um, at that point, I've got the URL request. Um, I've just got to know where to stick it. Um, so I look at my segment controller. Um, if it's at index 0, that would be top. Uh, I really should have made a pound of fine for it, but eh, I was a little lazy here. Uh, 0 is on the left. Top is on the left. Um, so I take it and I load this request um, into the dual browser's uh, web view top. If it wasn't top, then it must have been bottom, so I loaded it into the bottom. The other thing I choose to do is instead of leaving it colored blue, um, I'm just going to deselect it um, so it won't stay blue. So with this little bit of magic, um, clicking on something will now do something. Let's make it, let's see it happen. So now if I click on Apple, um, this top area should go to Apple's website. Um, you can see my little activity indicator did that. Um, if I click on bottom here, um, and I click on Rolls-Hulman, um, it should load up Rolls-Hulman um, into the bottom one. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, I, think that's, I think that's pretty neat. Um, that's worth uh, doing it again, but at 100% zoom. Um, so on the top, uh, let's uh, put Rolls-Hulman on the top. Um, and then on the bottom, I'll tell you what, let's just put Google down there. Um, so we got Google in the bottom. You can see that it went ahead and it updated the uh, the view here. Um, that's because we did all that stuff with uh, with web views in the last video lecture, um, and so it updated that. Um, and so it's pretty neat. Um, you can read about what's happening right now in Apple Insider. Um, always a good thing to keep up to date on if you're uh, all into Apple stuff. By the way, even the people that work at Apple, um, they read this too. Um, this one was big for me. Um, I ads to Japan. Um, that uh, we, I need that. My apps are big in Japan, uh, so that one I was happy about that. Um, so I thought, uh, I think that that's a good reference for you to always keep. So now we can click on bookmarks, um, and they actually do stuff. Now what I want to start doing is I want to start making these edit and add buttons work. Uh, we're going to do edit first um, because it's a lot easier. So we want to be able to click on delete. Um, and we want to see this row actually go away. Um, so we want to be able to delete things first. After we get delete working, we want to be able to move them around. So let's work on delete first. Um, so to delete something, um, there are a couple um, <coughs> of callbacks that you need to worry about. Uh, the first one is um, can edit row at index path. Um, this one, the default was correct. You saw that they were popping up. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and specify the defaults. Um, so I'm going to say, yes, you can edit it. Um, the, um, the magic edit button did this for me, but I, I like to spell things out. Uh, the next thing that we're going to have to do is um, whenever somebody says um, delete, like they click on the delete button, 
um, this is the function that will get called. Um, and depending on what the style was, if it was a delete style, um, then it will actually delete something, um, you know, which will which will be cool. They've actually got the code in here, delete it. If it was an insert, um, then um, you can insert it. The other, um, so these two are important. The other one that's important is, um, it says if it's a delete style, do this. If it's an insert style, how do you decide whether it's an insert or delete? Um, where you actually set that is that's actually in a delegate, um, which I think is a little confusing um, that that one's in a delegate. I'm really not a master of which ones are in the delegate and which ones are in the table. So I definitely see like the overall patterns, uh, but I'm not a master. Um, so you can see that by default, um, it actually defaulted to delete. Um, so we can put delete down here. Um, and if we do this and run it, um, it will kind of do something. Um, I can hit delete. Um, and now it didn't even do that. It crashed. <laughs> Um, and that's because I deleted it from the table, uh, but I didn't actually delete it from the um, from the backing store, right? So kind of my my data and my visual were out of sync, um, and that was no good. Another thing you can do, by the way, is that you could in this uh, you could say uh, insert, um, and if you say insert, you can see it shows a, a little insert button by each one, right? Um, and clicking on this doesn't really do anything. Uh, but that's how you can decide whether it's an, an insert or a delete. To be honest, um, we don't really need inserts because we're going to do inserts with this plus button. Um, so we're just going to leave this as delete. Um, and now we're going to go make it to where it didn't crash because <laughs> crashing's bad. So you can see that... that um, inside this commit editing style, that's when somebody clicks on the delete button. If it's delete, we want to do this. If it's insert, we want to do this. Um, we're not going to be inserting. So let's just let's just get rid of that else statement because we're not going to be inserting. We're just going to be deleting. Um, and the thing we need to do is we need to delete the data from our data source as well. Um, so this deletes it visually. Delete the UI table view cell. Um, and so that'll take care of that, but we've got to delete it from the data source. Uh, we want to delete it um, from self.bookmark uh, display names. Uh, we want to remove um, object. Um, the object that we want to remove um, is whatever was at this index path. So what we could do is we could say ns string uh, bookmark title to remove. So we could say bookmark display names object at index uh, index path row. So this is the one we're going to remove. Um, so we'll say into this guy remove object. Um, and then also we should clean up um, our dictionary. Um, and so we can remove object for key uh, bookmark title. Uh, so if I did these two things right, um, we should now be keeping the visual um, in sync with what's on the screen. So if I hit delete now, um, it should actually go away. So if I say done, um, I'll only have those two. Um, and now I can delete uh, things from my table. I assume nothing bad will happen if I delete them all. Um, so I managed to delete um, everybody. Um, that was pretty exciting. Um, I enjoyed deleting. Um, if you want to delete some more, you'll have to restart, um, and you can go back to deleting. It's kind of neat. So we delete it visually um, by um, delete rows for index path fade. Um, you could also do other things other than fade, but fade is fine. Um, and then we delete it in our data source, um, in the array that, that's uh, visible, and then also in our backing dictionary. If we had left it in the backing dictionary, nothing bad would have happened. Um, there just would have been a, an item in there that wasn't used anymore. Uh, but it's better to clean things up. Um, so let's catch up the slides real quick. Um, so this was clicking. Um, we said we can edit it. We said it was delete. Um, and then we removed it um, uh, from both the, the dictionary um, and the display names. 
oh, I guess we could also have used this remove object at index. Uh, whereas the way we did it is we said remove object. Um, so there's always more than one way to do things. So you could remove object at index, uh, which is what I did in the slides here. Um, and deleting bookmarks works. Next thing I would like to do um, is I would like to be able to rearrange them. Um, so I want to be able to click on edit and I want to be able to move, uh, you know, Apple below Rolls-Holman. Um, I want to be able to move them around. To move them around, uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need to do. Um, the <coughs> auto stubbing in was kind of nice. Um, the first thing is um, it asked you, um, you know, uh, can move row at index path, and if you say yes, um, then it'll pop up um, a little indicator beside it. So just by changing that one thing, if we hit edit, um, oh, I thought it was going to show me a little little thing over here. I guess we need to uh, do a little bit more. Um, so can move row at index path. Um, I thought that was all we needed, but I'll go ahead and do the next thing as well. The next thing is to actually move it. Um, so we want to actually move it somewhere. Um, cool. So I guess it was smart enough to look to see, did they implement the move function? Um, and this little tag is, is what you grab onto to move things around. Um, you can move things around at this point, um, but it will cause to extreme, it will cause extreme confusion. Uh, because we've moved them around visually, um, but we haven't moved around their, like, connections. Um, so if you click on, um, Apple in the top, um, it actually launched Google, um, and if I click on Google in the top, it actually launches Apple. Um, so you can see that moving them visually um, is dangerous, uh, because let's say I move Google down here to the bottom, um, and then I click on it. Um, I happen to know that it'll load Rolls-Holman. So if you move something visually, that's great and all that, um, but it's pretty important that you keep the data model um, also up to date. So this is where uh, we need to do that. So we need to um, rearrange uh, the data model or the data source. Um, so what we've got here is they've given us enough information to do that. Um, they've given us a move from um, and a move to, uh, which is good. So what we want to do is we want to remove uh, the object from the array at location uh, from index path dot row um, and we want to insert it um, at location uh, to index path dot row we do have to be a little careful um, when we remove something from the array it might go away um, because if, if we remove it and the array was the only thing keeping it, uh, that would be bad. Um, so um, retain uh, the object that is about to be removed, um, just to make sure it doesn't go away. And then when you pull it out of the array, we're sure that it won't go away. Um, and then at the very end, we're going to go ahead and release um, to bring back uh, the retain count. So you got to be careful about your memory management when you're pulling things in and out of an array because if it's the only thing that keeps it and you pull it out, um, it is gone, right? It will get uh, reclaimed by the system. Um, and hopefully you might, or you probably get lucky, um, but you don't want to re rely on getting lucky. So let's go ahead and now that we've got a plan, uh, let's paste in um, how you actually do it. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do these four steps. Um, so retain the object that's about to be removed. Um, so we go ahead and grab it. We say object at index path uh, retain. So that just puts a retain on it. Uh, we also get um, a reference to it um, called id object. The reason it's id is because I stole this code from somewhere else, um, and it just wants to be generic and to work for anything, so it's just kind of an id. Um, and most of your um, move functions will look like this. Then you remove it uh, from the from index path. 
Um, and then you insert object, so we're inserting object um, at the to index path, um, and then we clean up our memory management. We did a retain here, so we, do a, we balance it with a release. So now uh, my data model will stay up to date. So if I move Apple to the bottom um, and I click on Apple, um, it will actually be Apple that loads up here. Um, and if I click on the bottom, if I click on Rolls Holman, it will actually be Rolls Holman that's down here. So obviously you have to keep things in sync. Um, so moving them visually is great. Um, well, we've also got to change the backing store. Cool. Um, so we've we've done a lot. Um, we've uh, we've done the um, the deletes. Uh, we've done the moves. Um, the next thing we're gonna do. Um, so I'm ready for slide 45. I'm just gonna hop back real quick. Um, is we're going to add bookmarks. Um, adding bookmarks is no small feat. Um, the reason it's no small feat is because when we click on this button. Um, what should happen, or what's going to eventually happen, is this is a navigation controller, right? Um, we're going to push on, when we hit add, we're going to push on a new view controller. And that new view controller is going to let us add a new bookmark. Um, and then we're going to either save it or cancel it. Um, and if we save it, um, it's going to pop itself off the stack. Um, and then this table view will be visible again uh, with the new item on here. Um, just because it's no small task, um, we're going to go ahead and force you to take a break. Um, so we finished moving rows, which is great. Um, and we're going to go ahead and stop this video here, and we're going to pick up next time um, with adding new bookmarks uh, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of effort. Cool, so I'll see you next time for adding bookmarks.